Hey, this is Bug Powder Dust. Thank you for joining me for episode four of my Vanilla Colony tutorial. And at the end of yesterday's episode, we had just had a notification of our first raid, Gizmo, the biologist. Now, Gizmo's stats are pretty good, and normally I would like to uh, try and capture Gizmo. The trouble is we're not optimally set up at the moment for taking prisoners. I mean, we've got Stranger who is now can turn this into a prisoner room, um, and our guys are sleeping on the floor. So also the other thing to bear in mind, of course, is that tribals are quite hard to convert, um, much more hard than like pirates or, uh, or the, the outlanders, so the other factions, basically. Um, because tribals are not like us in terms of our technology, it makes them harder to convert. If you were playing tribals and you got raided by tribals, then I, I believe the way it works is that they'd be easy to convert, whereas these people then wouldn't because you're kind of not... Not the same, same sort of level, culture, things like that. Um, so we're probably not going to try and capture Gizmo, even though his stats are pretty good. Now, if he happens to fall down hurt, then we could probably patch him up and stick him in here with Stranger. Um, and then then I, then I can demonstrate how difficult they are to actually capture. Now, when you get raided, the, um, it's important to take a note of what the raid is going to do. Now, in this case, they'll prepare for a while, then attack. Sometimes they will attack instantly. It's always good to be aware of this. It means that we don't have to give this our immediate attention, but um, he's going he's gonna to attack within the next hour or so of, of in-game time. So what I'd like to start doing is basically just um, keep building this room. I'm going to build a copy of that. Um, so Eugene is hauling in the stag. Well, that's not the stag, sorry, the buck. Um, if you recall yesterday, we, we changed the settings of the storage and we put we made the, um, the buck be put into here rather than on the stockpile outside. Now, bearing in mind this uh, guy will be attacking any minute, it's probably good to get Jonathan back. Now, he's hunting the turkey, but I'm just concerned that actually he's <laughs> only one of two people who can actually fire a weapon. Um, so I need to basically bring him back. Now, the other thing to notice, and I kind of spotted this yesterday, is that we've got a couple of dead bodies on the map here. We've got this lynx is dead and clearly he was attacked by a fox maybe one tried to eat the other but they are if they get attacked by another animal out in the wild another piece of wildlife they get disallowed by default so we're going to allow that and then we can haul the body in um, as and when because it's basically it's meat that we we don't need to capture ourselves and in fact here there's the fox we can see the fox came out of it a lot worse by the looks of it um, Missing body parts, 41%. So it looks like the, the story here was the lynx attacked the fox uh, for something to eat. So we'll actually take the fox's body as well. So we'll we'll un, uh, uh, unrestrict those items. All right, that's looking pretty good. I just happened to see a clump of berries here. And because we're not growing anything right now, which we will fix in this episode, I'm just going to draw around it and do that. So when they are ready to harvest, which they all are, we can see in the bottom left-hand corner, that will come and harvest these up and it's just easy free food <clears throat> same also for this this hill route here really um you know you can put down the these grow zones and just switch off sowing and then they'll just come and harvest it when it's 100 percent. anyway i digress so let's move jonathan up and <clears throat> eugene is cracking on with this now as i said earlier there's no roof on this which means that um his his um constructing is quite quick because he has daylight to work with where's he off to now is he getting wood yeah so he's picking up the wood some wood from down here what I'm going to do is, because I'm concerned that Jonathan's going to wander off down here and start hunting this turkey again, I'm just going to turn off hunting and make sure that no more hunting is on for now. Yeah, because I don't want Jonathan to be over here when that chap starts to attack. So I'm going to turn off hunting for now. We can undraft Jonathan and he'll go back to doing something else. So in this instance, hauling steel. So we've got quite a lot of slate blocks here, 106, which is great. So we can actually start to build the, the rest of these. So that's what? Uh, 40. Now it says there, you'll notice, not enough stored. That's because that slate is not <clears throat> on a stockpile, excuse me. So it doesn't figure up here. But we know that there's enough on the map um, that, that, that we've seen. Um, so don't worry about it too much. They know that it's here and they'll, they'll come and get it. So that was 40. Oops, uh, let me just do that across there. That's another 35, 75. It's 105. And we're going to put two gaps in for the doors. That's 105 slates, and we've got 106, so that actually works out really well, because obviously we're taking these off as well. Okay, good. Perfect. So, the light's on. Uh, it doesn't appear to be... Oh, no, it is. It was just taking a second to click on, so that's brilliant. So we can now assign this to one of the colonists. Whose mood is the worst? Because um, whoever that is can have a... 
probably Fleming, I think. We'll, we'll give Fleming the uh, nice bed. And then what he plans to do is build another two rooms just here. And then see they're ready building the uh, the walls, which is great. So then we can turn this into a dedicated prison for now. Okay, Pirates of the Bloody Faction are beginning their assault. Awesome. So we'll draft all three of them, even though one of them can't actually do any violence, which is Eugene here. But what we'll get Eugene to do is, if you put Eugene at the front, Eugene can be um, the, the, the bait, if you like. So if Eugene gets into melee combat, it doesn't matter. He's just going to take a beating. Now, this dude only has a club. Okay, so the damage is not going to be massive. If he had a knife, this would be slightly different. I'm going to run Eugene around and hopefully um, he can outstrip the the um, tribal that's coming in. Tribals tend to be quite quick, as a matter of course. Now, if you want to know what the range of your weapons are, just when they're drafted, or indeed when they're undrafted, you can just hover over the bolt-action rifle or the weapon and it shows you the radius of the range. This is critical, quite honestly. So we'll see here, he will start firing when he comes to here and the, the, the revolver is just slightly less. So that's cool, it's fine. So we'll put Fleming, so Fleming and Jonathan can start firing at approximately the same time. We'll put Eugene up the front here. So he's going to come from the top here. Is he coming down? He is coming down. Okay, cool. So we'll put Eugene at the front. In fact, we're going to put Fleming down a little bit because obviously they don't have a line of fire right now. There we go. So Eugene's just going to run and he's going to just kite this gizmo. And hopefully these guys will fire. And actually hit gizmo, maybe, at any point. There we go. We've hit gizmo. Now, gizmo has taken a hit on his right leg. So that slowed him down beautifully. That's excellent. That's absolutely perfect. So we're just going to run Eugene around now. Took a headshot. That's probably got to hurt. So we're going to run Eugene around. Considerably easier now that Gizmo's taken... Oh, another headshot. Oof. Oh, neck and nose. Ouch. Going to bring him slightly closer so they get better shots. There we go. So Gizmo again. Maybe another leg hit. Yeah, it's also right leg. Left eye shot out. Oh, that's, that's painful. There we go. Gizmo's down. Um. Okay. Death in three hours, I'm not... I don't know. At this point, you've got to decide whether you want to try and pick him up, get him back and patch him up. I think we have the time to do it, but I don't honestly think that he is going to want to join us. But I'll do this just to demonstrate, okay? So let's 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 get Gizmo. And also, we'll pick up the survival meal and the club. Why not? I'll never do hauling. Okay, Jonathan. Cool. Eugene's going to pick up Gizmo. Eugene is the doctor, I think, of the, of the group. Medical? Yep. Yeah. That's cool. Ah, stranger has an infection. Left foot again. Hmm. Is this is this the one we're dealing with already? Yes, that's fine. It's just a, an old message. Okay, Jonathan's going on a food binge. Huh. So this basically means that he's going to eat a lot. He doesn't like sleeping on the ground. I think he maybe will make the bed for Jonathan, but it's kind of too late now. All right. So let's speed things up. Eugene, uh, Eugene is now treating... No, he's not treating Gizmo because we haven't set this. So, Gizmo is a prisoner. We can see here... Ah, okay, this is interesting. So the recruitment chance. Now, given that the level we're playing on, our level of difficulty is playing uh, on slightly easier than normal, this affects the recruitment chance of prisoners. And also, because I think it's early doors and we're under our minimum of four, it's making it easier for Gizmo to be caught. Uh, sorry, to be recruited. So this makes this actually a lot easier than it would be normally. So that's cool. I'm, I'm down with that. Um, the other thing we need to do is set um, Gizmo's uh, healing to heal root. We don't actually have any heal root, but I think we can expend some medicine things we have quite a lot uh, on Gizmo and uh, we'll, we'll patch him up. He doesn't have, a lot, doesn't have long to live. Oops. Two hours. All right. So we'll get Eugene to tend to Gizmo straight away. So we can see his... Uh, yeah, look, he's absolutely fine now. He'll get patched up. We have to deal with his left eye being shot out. That's going to affect his um, his effectiveness, but we can get him a barnic eye in due course um, if necessary. I'm just going to clean up the dirt in here because we obviously don't want uh, any. We don't give him to get an infection. It's entirely possible that's going to happen. All right. So Fleming is going to sleep on the floor there. Let's let's get rid of that. No apologies there for the uh, the Discord notifications going on in the background. That was entirely my end, not yours. <laughs> 
Right, so it's the middle of the night, but um, Fleming being the uh, night owl that he is, and a quick sleeper, which is awesome. He's gone to get the, uh, pit up the lynx, which is great, so we're going to get the meat from that. Thank you very much. That's six meals worth. Beautiful. Or oh, 5.8 meals worth, should I say. Uh, we've got a lot of mouths to feed, so this is actually really important. Um, what have we got here? Yeah. So he's cooking a batch of four meals there. Now what I want to do is finish off um, these two bedrooms. Once I've done that, then I'm going to focus them on growing. Uh, because at the moment, uh, construction is more important than growing. So with growing, let me just let that run in the background. Now, growing is quite, this is quite important. So if you come down to here, we've got fertility overlay. Now, the fertility of the soil is important to how how much grow how what, what stuff grows and how quickly it grows this kind of normal green color here in the middle that's kind of your average um, soil fertility we can see bottom left hand corner soil fertility 100 percent so stuff will grow at normal rates now this bright green area here that's your soil which is 140 percent fertility so stuff will grow um, 40 percent faster than it would normally so i highly recommend you, you utilize these where you can now unfortunately this is not a great spot for rich soil there's not much around, which is unusual for maps. So I'm actually going to use this map here. Sorry, this uh, this soil here. And I'm going to create a growing zone. And I'm going to basically do that very quickly. And then I'm going to shrink it down so it matches. I'm sure there's probably a mod to do this automatically, but um, I'm not aware of one. So just do that and just do that. I mean, there's, there's no harm in leaving it on the other areas, but um, it just takes them longer to, to plant the soil. Um, if it's not rich. Okay, and in here I'm just going to bang down some rice plants because it grows quickly. Now, th there's some differences here between these items. Um, I'm not going to go through them all now. They are on the Wikipedia and I do recommend that that you um, take a look at it. But rule of thumb is potatoes don't care about the fertility of the soil. They'll grow anywhere pretty much. So if the soil is like this, if I just um, click off, you'll see there's stony soil, fertility 70%. Now a lot of the other um, plants won't grow here, but potatoes will, and it doesn't really care about the type of soil. Corn, um, at one end of the scale, takes a long time to grow, but when it does, it yields a lot. So corn is recommended on fast growing uh, rich soil. Um, rice plant grows really quickly, but doesn't yield a great deal. So on here, I'm probably going to put down some, some corn plant here, I think, so it grows quickly. And then a bit nearer to home, where it doesn't matter, because it's all the same soil, I'm going to create just a couple of grow zones, say 8x8. Eight eight. Um, and I'll make this rice, because it's just going to grow quickly. And then we can get some, some good veg in. Um, and then maybe we'll do a strawberry patch. Now what's nice about strawberries, and I'm going to put a gap of four because otherwise you can get blight. And what blight does is it will just basically, it's like plant poison, but it can jump from plant to plant. You really don't want that. So um, what I'm going to do over here, oh, it's got some hill root to harvest, that's good. I'm going to put strawberries down. Now why strawberries? Strawberries can be eaten raw, which is awesome. So if you get a problem with the cook or, you know, you're running out of food, whatever, these can be eaten raw, so that's actually pretty epic. All right, good. Okay. Now, when you're building an area like this, what you want to do is it's really important to get one bedroom finished and the next one. So what they're doing is they're kind of working on maybe both at the same time. So what I'd recommend you do, just to kind of focus their efforts, is you say, all right, that's fine, but don't work on that. Now, how much slate do I have left? I've still got quite a bit, 106. Okay. So what you can do is build a copy and you're more interested in getting the room one room finished than the next room otherwise they don't seem to prioritize anything in any particular order and they can build it a really funny uh, funny um pattern so i've basically told them to, to focus on what they need to focus on i'm going to put in a couple of doors and i'm going to forbid that one so they're focusing on this room just to complete this room or well, they should be anyway fleming meanwhile doesn't have a roof on his um on his bed which is not ideal that's one thing i did forget to do so we'll get that to happen and when fleming gets up we'll get him to oh we won't do cleaning okay when jonathan gets up we'll get him to clean the dirt around here and also we need to um, put some nice flooring down as well uh, we're really short on stone so i'm just going to stick some wood flooring down it's going to be a little bit patchwork but it will do the trick so how's gizmo doing let's have a quick look at gizmo so gizmo's recovering stranger's good so from a recruitment point of view um, re resistance remaining only four. That's great. So a stranger will join us any minute. And we are going to have to think of more bedrooms. <laughs> Massive challenge. This is the thing that you have to find. You're going to get a lot of bedrooms quite quickly. But one thing we need to do is take a look at our food situation, which is actually running right out. So this is, again, something else to juggle. I'm going to go up and kill some muffalos. I don't think 
we we got a lot of mufflers, haven't we? Massive herds as well. It makes me a bit uncomfortable hunting herds of mufflers for the reasons I mentioned yesterday. So let's get the bucks for now. Because if the whole herd turns man manhunter, you've got a major problem on your hand. Hands. Even. Hand. Cool. So Eugene's almost done with making this. We've got a lot of slate left down here, which is fantastic. We'll get another bedroom up and running very shortly. Let's get a bedroom a bed built. Oops. I've got a habit of putting the head facing the door because they will get to it one square quicker. They interact using the, the, the head of the bed, but it bothers everybody's... Uh, did I put a steel door in there by accident? It bothers people's OCD, so I've gone back to, <laughs> to doing it against the wall, which is uh, traditional. All right, what I'll do again is I will take the roof area. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll leave it for now. It's not that important. Right, wooden floors. Yep, absolutely. Let's get some wooden floors down, stop the patchworking that's going on here. And we'll, we don't need to do a floor there. That's already got some of that one already. And we can actually start to enclose this now um, inside. So this is, th this is going to be an indoors area. And this will get roofed as well, the central corridor. So that's cool. All right, so got the bed. That's awesome. We're going to give that to Jonathan because Jonathan's mood was not exactly great. And so we're slowly, slowly starting to get them off the floor in here, which is exactly how it should be. All right. Oh, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> Oops. Just, no, no bother, no bother. We'll do that, Mac. Okay, so what's happening here? So we've run out of wood for the, um, for the wood fire generator. Hmm. Okay. So we're running out of power because there's nothing going on with the wind turbine right now. Now what I'm going to do is, because we need wood quite desperately, I'm going to set up a batch of wood chopping. Just get a whole lot done and then we can forget about it for the while. So I've queued up a lot of wood chopping. And I'm going to come to here and I'm going to increase plant cutting to one. Probably not for our cook though, but for everybody else. So everyone's going to drop what they're doing. They're now going to... So if there's no firefighting patient bed rest basic to do, they'll all start plant cutting because this is a priority one job. So you'll see they've come out now and they're plant cutting which is effectively tree cutting. And we're going to get Fleming to, after he's done butchering, oh, he's, so this is a hauling job, which we can't force. So we'll get Jonathan to do that because hauling takes some time. So Jonathan's going to come out here. He's going to start the generator off. It's not a lot of wood he's putting in, but it's enough for one and a half days. So we can see, the, um, so if you want to know how I did that, you literally hover, you shift and click or shift and right click to increase the priority for everybody or to decrease the priority. So that's actually quite useful. And that's why you don't set anything to one unless you think you're gonna you, you're not gonna need to increase it. So if you wanted to clean, we just do shift click up up by two to set it to priority one, and then we can set it back down again. So it's actually a really nice way of suddenly setting a, just a, a quick priority for everybody. All right. Okay, so thinking ahead. These two are going to join us, I'd say, relatively shortly. Yeah, there's not much resistance left and the recruitment's quite high. So we need to start thinking about bedrooms for, for these two as well. The other thing that we're going to want to do is get up a, a little bit of um, a little bit defences here, but we're still catching up in terms of the other things that we need to do. So in terms of wood now, we've got 864 wood. That's great. So let's decrease plant cut by one. And uh, we can crack on with eating food. Fleming appears to be eating not at a table. Ah, Yes, <laughs> that's a big mistake I've made. So the only table that they had to eat at was here. This was obviously our uh, initial starting room. And because they don't have access to this anymore, being a prisoner table, um, I need to move this and put it into a spot that's more accessible for everybody. Now, I haven't actually designed my recreation room yet, but it's probably... You need to put it near where the food is. I'm probably going to set up a recreation room up here, I think. This is probably not a bad spot to do it. But for now, I need to reinstall this into a spot they can all get to. So if I just do this, I'm going to use hotkeys for this just to speed things up a little bit. Oops, didn't want to do that there. I'm actually going to uh, spin that around. There you go. So slowly, slowly, we are getting there. Stuff things seems does seem a little bit torturous to start off with. Let's stick a wood floor down here where it needs to go. Not there in the middle. Okay, all good. Now, we're going to put a light here in the middle because they're going to start moaning because it's dark just here, and that should light up most of the corridor. So Eugene's pretty much done here now. That's great. This bedroom's complete, and we'll build a copy of the bed just there. 
That's our third bedroom done, so nobody needs to sleep on the floor anymore. Well, it will be when the bed's done. Yeah. Now, of course, what I could do is bring in a bed from here, but we're going to have to build it anyway because these colonists will be joining us soon. Now, I'm going to put a bedroom off the back here, so I'm going to expand this zone up here and then shrink the zone so it's not down here instead. All right. Now, thinking about it, actually, in order to get to the bedrooms from the back here, it's not going to be so easy to get to because you're going to have to walk out and round. So what I should have done really is put in a corridor here in the middle. Never mind. That's OK. We can put a corridor kind of running around like that. Um, so that's absolutely fine. We just need the, the, the material to build the, to, to build the actual uh, bedroom with. So it's starting to deconstruct this. That's great. This is all done. So we can actually put Eugene in here now. So Eugene doesn't have to sleep on the floor anymore. Hooray! Eugene's going to get a comfortable night's sleep. Brilliant. So we've got our first um, bedrooms set up here, which is fantastic. All right. Now, the other things that we need to focus on now is food, because our food supply is a little bit precarious. Um, have we slaughtered these two? I think we have. Yep, they're no longer here. Have we got anything else that's 0% we can hunt of any size? It doesn't look like it. So we're going to have to go after the muffalo. As I said, I'm a little bit squeamish about going after the muffalo. They finished my colony a couple of times previously, but this is a lower skill level, so we should be okay, hopefully. Right, there's a lot of limestone tile on the floor here, so we can take advantage of this. We're going to remove all that floor and get a lot of limestone back. Meanwhile, we've got quite a bit of granite. Got quite a bit of granite here, 134. And uh, we're going to build some granite bedrooms. Yeah. All right. Good. OK, we will come back to these messages over here. Just give me a sec. We're going to build some granite bedrooms. So granite. And we're going to do three by six again. One, two, three, four, five, six. And a door. And again down here. And what we'll do is we'll mine out these two spots. Like so. In fact, we will, yeah. So the plan here is we're going to build bedrooms here and then we'll put some vents in between the bedrooms. So in, in the cold of the winter, we can put some heaters and they can all just ventilate. So if you come to this, vents, we can put vents in between the bedrooms. So the heating can share between these like six bedrooms here. In order to do that, we need to mine out this whole area. So. Not great planning ahead from me because I don't like mining if I can avoid it. But um, we could just do the five for now. So we're going to mine all this area out here so they can sort of come in and walk around and go up here. Um, so that, that works. All right, so granite wall's going to go here. Uh, we're going to stick a door in there. Okay, fine, good. And wooden door there as well. Now we need to mark all of these to be hauled up and out of the way. Okay, rare thrombos. So let's talk about thrombos. Thrombos are very kind of benign creatures. Oh, is that a muffler? Buffalo's been down. Looks like Jonathan's going to finish that one. Um, they're benign creatures. Um, they are quite tough in a fight. So at low skill, not low skill levels, low weapon levels, I don't um, recommend fighting these because they take a lot of damage and they can do a lot of damage. However, their skin um, and their thrombo horn are worth a lot of money. In fact, this thrombo horn is very good as a close combat weapon, a melee weapon. So bear that in mind. It's not something that we're going to look at now. We just don't have the power to take them down, not with just two people <laughs> able to fight. It's not going to end well. Um, and also you'll notice uh, with the thrombos, uh, the thrombos, 100% chance of attack. So as soon as you even breathe upon them in a, in a certain way, they're going to attack you. So I don't recommend it unless you're confident you've got good armor and decent weapons. All right. Now, at the Ambush Duchess. So this is the introductory mission for the royalty tree. Now, it always starts like this. So a, uh, a particular royal is um, running from something really silly. You keep them at your colony for a few hours. They will do some work, which is actually quite nice. Um, and she'll give eight honor to whoever accepts the quest. Um, and they will get initial title of yeoman uh, and you get a first level of psychic powers. So yeah, why not? We'll, we'll do that. Now, who are we gonna accept it with? Let's have a quick look. Normally somebody with good social skills is a good start with it. Um, so maybe Eugene. Being non-violent um, doesn't make a difference to the side cast that they have. They can still use them in, a, in an offensive fashion. And by offensive, I mean offense and defense, not offense. I find that offensive. <laughs> so I'll probably accept with Eugene, actually. That looks 
pretty good. All right, so with Eugene. All right. So, Ruskus has temporarily joined your colony. What's Ruskus like? Look at Ruskus' skills. So good. <laughs> um, yeah, so they're... They can't do dumb labour or commoner work, which is a bit of a drag, because they can't actually do anything. Now, what's going to happen is Ruskus is being chased by a raccoon. The raccoon is going to come onto the map exactly where Ruskus entered it. So we need to be ready to take the raccoon down, which is right there. So let's get let's get everybody off doing what they're doing here. And move them over to here. Uh, where's Jonathan? Jonathan's here. Jonathan has one of our weapons, so we need Jonathan to join in the party. So the raccoon's coming here, as we can see. So Eugene and Fleming are waiting. Um, Eugene again is going to do the whole. Yep, is Eugene's going to do the whole bait thing. A bit different with animals. Animals tend to just fixate on somebody. Um, where's Jonathan? Jonathan's here now. With any luck. Yeah, this is not looking good. They're coming for Fleming by the looks of it. Um, okay. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Come on, Eugene, you can go. Come on, Eugene, you can make it. These guys can't hit a barn door. Keep moving, Eugene. There we go, perfect. Good. Eugene got a little scratch. And I'm going to enable, and this is the other thing that you can do, you can enable self-tending. So if you have um, a doctor who's very good, and the other two don't really doctor, or they're very bad at it, you can actually allow the, the physician to heal thyself. Uh, so self-tend is on, which means Eugene will now tend um, his own wounds it's not it's not very important now if they have a little scratch and you're short on medicine st stick that onto doctor care but no medicine because using a really good medicine for this is really not worth it so we've turned that off all right cool so somebody here can grab the raccoon corpse and take it in and it's um something else to butcher down and to eat basically i notice the floor there has been undone so that's cool and also here as well. All right, so our tables have been moved now, so we can actually uh, sit at table to eat, which Jonathan's doing, which is awesome. Oh, shuttle's arrived. Brilliant. So shuttle's leaving in 18 hours. Um, so the shuttle is there. Awesome. Now, we need to put in Ruskus. Currently contains nothing. So what we can do is we can... In fact, we get Eugene to tend to himself. Okay. Now, Ruskus, will, Ruskus is no good. He's not going to help her. Well, she's not going to help us do anything. So let's just get right-click on the shuttle get to get in the shuttle. The shuttle then will tell to take off. Ooh. All right. So what does that mean? It means that Eugene has now got the title of Freeholder. That's pretty cool. Um, sorry, he's actually got a title of Yeoman. My bad. He's currently a Freeholder, but he needs to, be, um, he needs to have a ceremony which will then make him Yeoman. Let me just show you here. So, you start off as a freeholder, and that doesn't give you a side cast. But he's he had, um, I think it was eight honor. He was given uh, eight honor, which means he used one to be a freeholder, and now he's a freeholder with seven honor to carry over. Now, because yeoman only needs six, he's one point into yeoman, but he doesn't become a yeoman until he does the yeoman ceremony. When he does the yeoman ceremony, he becomes a yeoman and he gets a side cast, which we'll show you down here. So we will do that as soon as Eugene wakes up. So Eugene is currently recovering from uh, from his uh, epic battle, running away from the raccoon. All right, good. So food is looking a bit better. We just need to process it. We've got a couple of meals left. So we're currently getting through 10 meals a day now. We'll see three here plus two at two a day. All right. So the wind turbine's kicking off. We can hear Jonathan hunting the muffalo. Now, fortunately, Jonathan's skill uh, with a gun and uh, the distance he's at means that we're hunting the muffaloes without turning the manhunter, which is good. Something to bear in mind. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Okay, cool. So when Eugene gets up, we'll do the, the yeoman ceremony. Effectively, it means that um, this dude called the bestower, who's got an epic red cloak, will appear in a shuttle and tap him on the shoulder or do something. And Eugene will turn into a yeoman. Awesome. Now, when you've got so few people, you need to just keep an eye on the cleanliness and, um, yeah, okay, we we'll do cleaning, and actually manually just uh, keep places clean, especially the butchery and the, uh, the, the, the kitchen area. Highly important. 
and also on a kind of second level of importance um, the place where they eat because it will go from you'll notice here as he cleans it this awful rating goes down we need to do the floors as soon as the floors go in it will stop you know we can see here's some negatives going on notably stuff on the floor really so yeah it's not ideal this is a storeroom it's you know it's not a rec room we'll we'll turn it we'll build a rec room shortly and uh, try and do this properly ah we've run out of uh, run out of wood power again so who's up Fleming is up. Fleming's butchering. We're going to get... F oh, it's a hauling task. <laughs> Keep forgetting about that. And Fleming does not do hauling. So we have to probably wake somebody up. Who's got the most rest at the moment? Uh, Eugene's pretty well rested. And Eugene is actually a night owl. So we can get Eugene up to do that. Okay, so Eugene's going to get some wood. He's going to stick it in the generator. And boom. It's not very windy around here, is it? Because the wind turbine is just not uh, kicking out much. So I'm, I'm well aware that we still need to get a battery, but um, in the scheme of things, we're just kind of trying to stay one step ahead. These guys are going to join us shortly. They need bedrooms. So we don't want them sleeping on the floor. We've got beds for them already. In fact, we can actually move one bed into here right now because they only need two beds. So that will save us a little job a bit later on. Now, we're going to do Eugene's Yeoman's Ceremony. So we're going to accept. Shuffle turns up. Here comes the dude in red. I once had in my last play through the beach, um, this guy arrived, stepped out, immediately had a heart attack <laughs> and dropped his uh, his Eltex staff here, which I used for the rest of the uh, of the playthrough. It was great. All right, Bestow is waiting. Now, at the higher levels, what will happen is you need a throne room and the Bestow will go to the throne room to do the ceremony. But at this very low level, you don't need a throne room. So we're going to get Eugene to go out, right click on the Bestower and do the th ceremony. So this is taking place. Boom. So Eugene has uh, now become Yeoman as we can see here, and he has an ability, which is Chunk Skip. Yeah, not the most useful level one skill, if I'm being quite honest. That's one of the worst, in fact. There are some very good level one um, uh, sidecasts. One of them is called Solar Pinhole, which basically um, creates light and a minor amount of heat for like some hours. Really, really useful if you're working in a dark area, like if you're doing mining or something. Chunk Skip. Skip the five chunks of rock or slag to scatter them near the target point. Hmm. Click to learn more. So does that mean you can actually pick up? I've never used this before. Skip the five chunks. Okay, let's retry that. Let's have a look. So Eugene, let's do that. So if we do that. Ah, okay. So you pick them up from here. And then you choose where you want to put them. Oh, I see. It picks five at random and then puts them around a spot. Right, okay. So that's of limited use. Okay, now I've done that, let me explain what's going on down here. Each time you use a side cast, it uses heat, okay, and side focus. So that's what the H and the P stand for. Heat is, um, heat builds up to a maximum of 30, as we can see here. Now, when you get to th when you get near this, it will stop you from casting a spell. You can override it by clicking on this, which allows you to say you're in a really tight jam. You can make your heat exceed 30. Bad things happen if you do that, however, or it can happen. I've had one guy set himself on fire. <laughs> his his hair caught on fire. So uh, yeah, don't don't be too keen to do this. Now your heat will increase as you increase in levels, but at the moment um, it's set to 30. So your heat goes down quite quickly. If I just let it run, see, it's going down quite quickly. So that that's actually, that's fine. You just have to manage your heat. Now, Psy Focus is entirely different. Think of Psy Focus as fuel, fuel in the tank. Now, you gain Psy Focus from doing meditation. Now, what happens is every time you use a spell, I say spell, I mean, I'm going to call them spell, they're Psy cast spells, whatever. It uses a percentage of your current Psy Focus. Now, you can set this to say, actually, I want to use, so try and get your Psy Focus up to this level, then stop. So every time you do this spell, for instance, it uses 4% and it will drop accordingly. So let me, let me do this again. So um, heat 14, let me jump to zero. Okay, bye-bye to the shuttle. So let's do this this um, this chunk skip again. Now what it says, it takes five five um, rocks and puts them in the center. So I'm going to do that. In fact, I'm going to put them over here because that's kind of where I want them to go anyway. I do that and watch. This will increase by 14. Boom, see, 14. And it's used 4% of my side focus. So that's basically how they work. It's pretty straightforward, as I said. All right, good. Quest completed. Okay, so they're all going to bed. You can see that um, he's got a little kind of blue aura around his head. Or he did have anyway, because that, that's show he's just getting rid of heat. It's 
quite a nice little touch. All right. So that's where we are for now. I'm going to skip forward uh, until the morning. Okay, so we got to the morning and actually we've come to the end of this episode. Um, so that's actually quite useful. We showed um, a couple of attacks and we showed a little bit of the royalty DLC, uh, namely the, the side casts. We got some beds and we got some bedrooms set up, which is awesome. And these guys are going to join us probably in the next episode because their resistance is relatively low-ish. Although it's going quite slowly because obviously my guys are not that advanced. So maybe next couple of episodes. All right, cool. The other thing that we need to do is we need to reinstall these out here because having them in there is no good. Okay, that's cool. And um, I think we are done. So I hope you found that useful. Uh, that was actually quite a eventful episode. I feel like we're getting places now. Our food supply is um, a lot healthier. We haven't actually planted anything yet because growing is kind of... Uh, there's other people. There's a lot of constructing going on, so Eugene hasn't got to it really. Um... And ditto, Jonathan. Jonathan is is going to get to growing last. He's going to do mining, plant cutting, hauling. Then he's going to come around, then do growing. So I might set that to two so they satisfy the whole growing thing first, which I think will probably work a bit better. All right, cool. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, do join me on the next episode, which should be out in the next day or two. But for now, this is Bug. Pull and plug. <laughs>